اهلا يا جماعة بدي احكي لكم انه رجعت لكم بفيديو جديد <تصفيق> بس مش نافعة المهم انه هذا الدرس كتير حبيته اخذناه أخ... طلتها الماضي فحبيت اراجعه معاكم يعني هو درس كيوت لطيف خفيف So it talks about intrusion detection systems, and um, because nowadays uh, the IoT and so many, so many things are becoming, يعني, uh, everything depends on the internet and everything. So intrusion detection system is becoming very important. Um, so an intrusion detection system detects intrusions in a network يعني اسم على مسمى so um, this is uh, okay so this slide talks presently there is much okay there is interest in IDS and um, so some focus on one machine and try to stop the intruder from doing damage uh, such as LIDS for Linux Okay, so this is an intrusion, intrusion system for the Linux machine and some can detect a worm attack from the way it spreads from machine to machine like GRIDS. We're gonna see how later or the techniques or methods of IDS. So this is an example. Uh, so it says that uh, intrusion detection is a data mining and uh, they determine from log files if there is an intrusion based on reasoning by an expert system and is and stat as a, is an example uh, what this means is um, يعني it, it, uh, it, it monitors the IDS the intrusion detection system is like a monitor that monitors the data. So if there is like unusual activity based on uh, either uh, like behavior or did by determining if this is good or bad behavior and stuff like that, it can detect if there's an intrusion. Yani an attacker behaves differently to a normal user. Um, so this is uh, when the intrusion detection system will raise an alarm. Uh, many implementations are listening passively to some LAN segment, look at the traffic and detect an intrusion. So what they do is they just, uh, they just monitor the traffic. Um, Snort IDS is a popular freeware program of this network IDS type. So this is an example. Um, other IDS solutions protect one machine by access controls. So we already studied the access controls, which were the ac access control lists and the ac access control matrices and the uh, okay. I example access control matrix and access control list and the capabilities which I guess I forgot the name but uh, okay so back to our topic um, so what is an intrusion detection so it's a system that detects uh, like intrusions bad behavior and blocks like it can block or report unauthorized activity to computer networks because actually there's also a intrusion prevention system which is not in the slides but intrusion prevention system like acts with the intrusion detection kind of like it takes con it takes action intrusion detection system focuses on how to detect attacks 
how to يعني how to find attacker behavior how to see the data if there's unusual stuff and stuff like that so okay and intrusion prevention system will act after the alarm has been raised by the detection so let's see the life expectancy of a default installation of linux red hat 6.2 is estimated to be less than 72 hours the fastest compromise happened in 15 minutes uh, net bios scans affecting windows computers were executed with the average of 17 per day okay so uh, these are examples of why intrusion detection systems are important all right so um, all right so intrusion is uh, a set of actions aimed to compromise security goals namely integrity confidentiality and yani all the security uh, uh, properties anyone can be monetized or availability of a computing and networking source intrusion detection is the process of identifying the responding or and responding to intrusion activities so um, like if there's a ddos attack or the distributed uh, uh, distributed uh, denial of service attack and um, the intrusion system, the intrusion detection should uh, يعني, uh, raise an alarm, يعني, it should detect it. Okay, so um, this is showing us how this is like a firewall that prevents, but still some attacks are detected, and then you want to survive by reacting. So it's an extra protection you know and it follows the security principle that it's a like it's layered mechanisms and more more layers is better so elements of intrusion detection primary assumptions uh, we assume that system activities are observable so they can be monitored and normal and intrusive activities uh, have a distinct evidence and um, so i want to mention that uh, intrusion detection actually is a um, good candidate for machine learning because uh, you want the machine intrusion detection system to learn uh, the behaviors of good and bad you know so but you know you, it's really really difficult to actually define what is good and what is bad okay so i don't know if it's possible uh, maybe in the future so we can find a way to detect components of intrusion detection systems uh, so from an algorithmic perspective uh, there's features that capture an intrusion evidence and models piece evidences together okay so uh, uh, so features i guess they are what uh, define or uh, model they are what model in, uh, like the behaviors and models are piece evidences together so I guess if you pile up features you get a model I'm not sure from a system architecture perspective um, audit data processor knowledge base decision engine alarm generation and responses so architecture perspective i mean this is like the components the architecture components you need a audit data processor 
a knowledge base and decision engine i'm not sure what knowledge base or audit data processor means but um, decision engine makes sense so if it um, i mean it's supposed to converge to a solution and make a decision and an alarm generation and response well should act based on the decision I guess the knowledge base is uh, um, like the information that they use to make the decision and I don't know but everything needs a processor I guess um, okay so this is a more clear uh, vision of the components so we have the audit records right so audit records are probably like uh, the data that's being copied from like if they are monitoring some line they copy the data and then this is the data processor then the activity data uh, goes into the detection engine I guess this is where the normal and intrusive activities have the distinct evidence. This is where we know the, the evidence. So this is the detection. And then we take the dis decision based on the detection. Uh, here we have the models and then the table, decision table. Okay, then we have a action or a report. So we have different types of ideas. So application-based, host-based, and network-based. So application-based is, uh, I guess it's specific to some application. And I, maybe it's too specific, Yani, if, uh, more on that later. Host-based is like end-to-end, uh, -end, I guess. Like the host is the computer, the end, of the network and the network based i guess it's the network itself like it's the cable yes i believe so the types we have application ideas uh, it watches the application logs watches the user actions and stop attacks targeted against an application so the advantages is that at an application level data is uh, can be read clearly yani because any data that reaches the computer uh, it can be read because it's decrypted right so it's uh, yani it's not encrypted yet or it's decrypted so uh, so this is very useful information because uh, sometimes an attacker can hide behind encrypted data or something i'm not sure the problems is that it's too high in the attack chain this makes sense because the application is like like the last layer you know that the mo the uppermost or the most top yani like if an if an intrusion is detected then it should yani it's too late you know if if the attacks reach the application level then kind of too late yani it's it can be useful but it's a little late because an attack should already enter the host so the host idea is watches the kernel operations and uh, we know from the previous slides kernel operations are the operations that a user cannot really control yani you think when you press yani when you press open you think that you opened but no you you told the kernel to open right so no one can access the kernel so it it watches the kernel operations and it watches the network interface and it stops illegal system operations because like okay uh, and drop attack packets at network drive okay so it drops attacks before they reach the application layer because 
they deal with the kernel and network interface. The advantages is again the encrypted data can be read. They can save a copy of the encrypted like of the data before encryption or after decryption. Each host contributes to the detection process. Uh, each host contributes to the detection process. I guess this means that uh, either the sender or the receiver, both, yeah, I mean the sender of the bad packet and the receiver, both can be detected. Okay. Um, one of the problems is again, it's positioned too high in the attack chain. So, because why? Because the attacks reach the network driver. Okay, here the attacks reach the application, so this is even worse. Now let's see the network IDS. The network IDS will watch the network traffic and watch active services and servers report and possibly stop network level attacks. So it monitors the traffic from the cable point of view and reports and stops network level attacks. Advantages is that attacks can be stopped early before they reach the host or application. And attack information from different subnets can be correlated. Uh, um, I think this means that yani, if, if they manage to detect some inf like an attack, they can, um, they can send this information to different subnets. I'm not sure suddenness can be correlated. So I guess they stop attacks from sp spreading also, money. not just in, in one level, but could stop it from, from other different subnets. Problems is that encrypted data cannot be read. Mm. So in the cable lane line, Encrypted data is just encrypted data and you cannot decrypt it. You need to be in a host, right? Annoyances to normal traffic if for some reason normal traffic is dropped. Makes sense because um, sometimes the network IDS is not 100% accurate, right? So you should expect some bad yani, some behavior to be classified as bad when really it's just normal behavior or it mixes to and then they start dropping normal behavior which is really bad it it, uh, it, it can compromise the efficiency of the system so okay uh, so we have a comparison table as we can see that the application based uh, monitors the application uh, the data rate is low and the placement uh, is in the user land process or application and it's in the application layer the cost is low to moderate and the maintenance is moderate Okay, maintenance is like, um, you know, if an application, like an application, one application is different to another, right? And if a new application is downloaded or some new software, like a new update, actually, a new update happens in some application, then, you know, it needs new learning and how can it detect the data if it's being different now you know the data is different so how can they detect attacks so th there's some maintenance right encrypted data uh, it supports the readability of encrypted data and uh, switched networks is not problematic so what is switched networks Let's see.
So I guess it's some okay. So it doesn't need any switch, I guess. So it's uh, it could this is why it doesn't have a lot of cost because you don't need any uh, hardware, I believe. Yani, I'm not sure. And the host based is um, it monitors the host. It uh, has a moderate uh, data rate because you know the higher you are, there's less data because it's more specific to an application. So. I guess, Yanni, this is my interpretation. The placement is in the kernel or system process. The cost is moderate. Okay. And the maintenance. Um, okay, so it could be high because, uh, you know, if there's a new update to the whole operating system, it's not like an application which is has very specific you know um, services the, the 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 system or the os like it can differ very widely i guess and there's always an update so how is this feasible to keep changing the ids it supports encrypted data readability and it does not need hardware i guess the network based is in the network segment monitoring it has high data rates obviously because all the data goes through the line and it, uh, it's a network node um, i think a network node is like a, a, i think a router like it's a node of itself you know it's an, it's a different component to the computer i i, I guess the cost is high because of course you need to actually bring actual hardware and some actual uh energy has mush some software you know like it's it needs some hardware but it does not need much of maintenance because okay so you update your os system so so what you know the data in the line is just the data in the line it doesn't change uh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, okay so um doesn't need that much maintenance any it's just a switch you put it on the wire and it just monitors the data okay so it does not support encrypted data readability because obviously it's encrypted and it's problematic because it needs us an actual switch um, simple process model for intrusion detection so first it captured the data, analyze the data, and then respond, and so forth. For example, applications, log network driver, or network cable. Parse data, filter data, and execute detection algorithms. So this is either it could be a network cable for the network IDS, an application log, network driver for the application layer, I think. Uh, the response can be to just block back packets, send an alarm, update the routing cables, or kill processes. Um, the two basic methods used are misuse detection and anomaly detection. These are the two methods. So the misuse detection is kind of specific. It it like take this example alert TCP. So in this TCP protocol, if you find from this IP address um any 
activity to this okay any activity like if this sends any data at with this is the data that's being sent then send an alert external mounted access so I'm not exactly sure I understand the code but so it, it it's very specific if if this sends some data this specific IP address sends the data th with this content then it will raise an alert so it search attack signatures which are patterns bytecode or expressions belonging to a specific attack and it's just a specific attack it, it targets targets specific attacks often called signature based detection a signature is crea created by analyzing an attack method the patterns are stored inside the IDS example of a network IDS enable an IDS mode of snort the above command means that let snort work as an IDS for the network 192.1 like this network according to the rules inside snort.conf file sample rule alert at udb protocol any any uh like if this network contains any of this content then send this message the rules are modular and it is easy to add new rules typically the rules make alarms of all old security breaches so that you cannot notice any new breaches ah uh, so the first the first breach goes and yani takes over but it can never happen again this is what i understand yani uh, easy to add new to typical arms of all all security breaches so the first attempt of a breach cannot be known but after after this one breach خلاص, they get the pattern and they avoid any further attacks this is the misuse now we study the anomaly detection and the anomaly detection is not specific it is based on a threshold so if someone for example uh, always like for example if i work from 8 a.m to 2 p.m every day and after 2 p.m i never ever work ever okay but suddenly the computer starts to work and does something like opens the browser at like 6 p.m in the evening and the IDS knows that I never ever open my laptop after this time so an alarm will be uh, turned off so this is rule based and method okay the threshold detection is x events and y second triggers and alarm okay so uh, to make this more clear if um, like we have a, a like a one a, like if if uh, if an attacker will send one gigabyte of data uh, like one gigabyte of data to the computer it will be detected but this is a threshold there's a threshold like if you only use like uh, 20 megabyte a day then then one gigabyte will be easily detected and it will know that this is an attack and this is abnormal the thing is um, an attacker can send one megabyte of data over months like instead of sending one gigabyte a day it can send like one megabyte one megabyte every day and it can never trigger an alarm 
So this is the threshold detection. It's uh, it, it's not always correct. يعني, it could be that Jack يعني, decided to open his laptop at 6 p.m. يعني, it's not necessarily an attack. But this is how anomaly detection is. There is statistical measures uh, such that current traffic profiles matches the normal profile. Okay, so um, يعني, if مثلا, for me, and I like to open, say, YouTube, and I like to open uh, uh, my banner, I like to open the word a lot, but I never open Firefox, or I never use, um, like these things, you know, DuckDuckGo, I never use this. So this will be abnormal behavior. So this is like, it's specific to me. Yani I'm different to different people. It's like my basmati, yani, my, my fingerprint. Then we have the machine learning based. Like we said, machine learning is uh, very, very good um, for anomaly detection because machine learning, it, it, the machine learns behavior learns what is good and what is bad what is me what is not me so the machine learning so current traffic profile matches the normal profile but in general not explainable so uh, I think not explainable means that uh, you know machine learning doesn't really follow an algorithm in of itself what it does is just takes the data as is and learns it. Yani it takes a bunch of data, a bunch of lots and lots of data and just learns the data. There is no, you know, you don't, ML is not like, yani it doesn't, it doesn't learn addition. You give it lots of addition, yani you give it lots of, you tell it 1 plus 1 equal 2 and 1 plus 2 equal 3. You tell it this information, you give it this information, and machine learning doesn't really learn addition. It does not learn, it doesn't know how to add. It just takes in the addition and learns. And it's it's remarkable, really. I, yani, it, it just takes in the data and learns. Okay. And then it, it starts to learn, like, behaviors, you know, without really an operation. So I guess this is what not explainable means. So it's really hard, you know. So, okay. So IDS principle of detection. What is the difference between misuse detection and anomaly detection? So technique, uh, misuse detects patterns of interest, okay? So if a breach happens, it detects the pattern and then خلاص, saves it and always kicks it out. Generalization is problematic because, you know, it's very specific, so it does not generalize. Specificity, specificity so it's the opposite of generalization. And it's, yes, it's very specific to a specific attack. So it's useful for uh, d detecting specific attacks. Sensitivity is high. يعني, if this pattern, then it blocks it. It, it, it. it doesn't make any mistakes. This is why the false alarm is also low. It doesn't make a mistake because if this is pattern is detected, whether it's an attack or not, it will raise an alarm. Uh, يعني, it's always very accurate. It's more accurate. Uh, whereas anomaly detection, it is it does generalize. يعني, from around six to eight, you know, it's a very big margin. You know, when you work from you know eight a.m. to two p.m., if you work you know twelve hours a day, then this is a large amount of time, and you know this may raise some issue because because the attacker can also work in that time. يعني. So it's uh, moderate sensitivity, cannot specify, and it has some false alarms.
because it's just general you know you know one day i can download a movie and use a lot of traffic you know adaptation so misuse detection does not adapt to anything so if the attacker changes his pattern the misuse detection does not detect it however uh, anomaly detection uh, uh, as we said it uses machine learning and one of the perks of machine learning is that it can adapt you know like if my behavior is changing over time machine learning can can change with me you know um, machine learning you know like I said it's not like an operation it just takes in data and starts to learn like what's my behavior if I'm changing over time it changes with me it's always learning you know and uh, it, it's, uh, it's it can adapt you know if, if uh, my working time changes and stuff like that okay so IDS response principles uh, it can have a response as an alert okay and an increased surveillance log more okay so if if some attack is kind of detected it can increase surveillance throttling is slow down malicious traffic and uh, kind of like a break uh, blocking access it can drop some data and uh, update the firewall or router it can make a counter attack eye for an eye tactics honeypots and padded cells i think honeypots are like uh, yani it moves the attacker into a honeypot yani it moves it to another 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 environment so it routes the attacker to a fake system and let him play freely and the padded cells Okay. Uh, IDS problems in the detection stage. So um, detection problems. Okay. So we can have a true positive. True positive means that a true attacker was uh, uh, detected. This is a good thing. True negative is uh, true negative. Yani it's a correct. Uh, uh, like it doesn't raise an alarm when there is no attack. So this is a good thing. False positive and false negative are two bad things. False positive means that there is no attack, but it raises an alarm. It raises a positive alarm. So it's classifying good good behavior as bad this is bad thing and false negative is an attack that has been incorrectly classified as benign or good like like the one we mentioned about the anomaly um, that you know the attacker can send one megabyte of data over the course of six months and it will be detected as benign Detection rate is obtained by testing the IDS against set of intrusive scenarios. So this is important because different scenarios, you know, you can have a different detection rate. So you should be cautious if you want to buy an IDS system or an IDS. Advanced techniques. So for protection, there's a... Um, Okay, I think I can do a different video.